Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in the series of real-time DevOps issues. Now, as you can see on my screen, today's problem, today's problem statement is bug in production. Why didn't we catch it before? Now, please don't mind my handwriting because it's coming bad, but you got the gist. So the problem statement would come like an interviewer would ask you that there is a bug in production. Why didn't we catch it before? And how do we avoid it in future? So you can give uh, three, four things, three, four answers for this and with solution. Now he can put a condition that you cannot check logs because whenever you try to resolve a problem, whenever you try to resolve a bug, you always go for the logs first that, okay, this is something is wrong. I can check it through logs and get it resolved. Okay. But an interviewer can ask you that you do not check logs. You, you cannot check logs. That's the condition. So what would be the solution for this all right so we are going to discuss this problem again uh, before moving further i would like to request that if you're new over here my name is ravish and i create content for devops and cloud related stuff kindly subscribe to the channel because it really motivates me to create more content like this okay so let's move forward so uh, i will give you four solutions for this so let me select a better color for this so let's take, take green so i'm going to give you four what is happening I think I've selected something wrong. Let me do control Z, control Z. Okay, cool. And let me select a pen. I'm going to give you four solutions or you can say four problems, four problems with solutions and how to avoid, how you can avoid. Them. Okay, so let's dive right into it. So the first thing that you can talk about is the production servers might got updated. So when your application is down, okay, so application down, uh, so how, how, how it matters. Okay. When your application is down, there could be one reason that your server is down. So there could be a server an EC2 instance or a compute engine or a VM that is down. Okay. Now when the CI CD is happening, this is going to deploy the code in your server, right? but it won't be able to make a contact with server. Why? Because server is down. So there could be one reason that could be one reason that your server is down. So you can answer this in the interview that one reason could be my server is down. And when CI CD is trying to make contact to the server to deploy the code, to deploy the application, it is not happening. So my CI CD is failing. That's one thing. And my code is not up. The latest code is not up, which means the production is down. Okay. There can be multiple reasons while server is down. Okay. So, uh, if he asks you, uh, if an interviewer asks you like, what, what is the reason uh, a server can be done? So there can be multiple reasons to it. So, uh, if you remember a few months back, a few weeks back, AWS was down. So if your application was on AWS and EC2 was down, then ap your application would have hurt. Okay. That could be, uh, one thing. But the next thing that's the most feasible solution that you can say is that, uh, for example, there was an update. Okay. There was an update. Uh, you, I hope you know about the updates, right? These are monthly or weekly updates that happen from the, uh, the creator of the OS side. If you, if you are owning windows, windows servers for the application, then there could be updates. If you are having Unix or Linux based system, they are having multi updates, right? So you can say that the Windows server or the Linux servers were getting updated and they just went down and never came up. Okay. So that could be one reason that your servers were down. So that you can explain. Now, whenever you talk about a problem, always give the solution. Okay. That what I can do to avoid this in future. So if they ask about the solution, you can say that you can do monthly, monthly uh, check for the updates for the updates. Okay. You can do check and this can happen, uh, through, uh, an automated program. You can write a Python script, shell script, or a windows batch script or a PowerShell script that checks monthly updates of the VMs. And then it can update them and they are always ready before a production deploy deployment that is happening. Okay. So I hope you have understood this part. So this is the first problem that can happen. Now, second thing. So let me select some other color. I'll go for this one. Okay. So second reason can be you deployed. Now this will sound very stupid. You deployed wrong branch. Okay. So you 
had to deploy prod branch or the release or the master branch but what you did you deployed dev or a QA or a stage branch and this is not in sync with the master okay and this this actually sounds very stupid but a lot of time what happens is when you have to do production deployment some people in hurry some kind of panic they do this basic mistake and they deploy something else to the production now the application would be up or the application might not even be up the latest code won't be there and there would be complaint that there is a bug in production okay that's actually not a bug that's the problem that you have deployed a wrong branch you had to go with this for the deployment and you had gone with this so this could be one problem okay but uh, now again we'll talk about the solution that how do we avoid it so in case you want to avoid it uh, you have to have a check before deploying to the, pro to the production a senior member or a product owner should be in loop while doing the deployment so uh, so let's say uh, there were 10 steps uh, in your pipeline and till ninth step everything is done and from ninth till tenth step is this the production deployment so what you have to do you can have a check over here from someone who is a senior member of the uh, of your team or the product owner generally it's the product owner who can take a final decision of doing the deployment or doing the delivery okay so this is how you can avoid it so i hope you have understood the second one let's move to the third one okay i am going to select this color okay so third thing that you can talk about is the servers are of not same configuration so you have dev you have stage and you have qa and you have production server they are not of the same configuration now this sounds different and this sounds stupid but this has happened and i have seen this so dev and stage are equal this is not equal and this is certainly not equal equal in the sense of let's say configuration uh, consider a situation this is 2 gb ram this is 3 gb ram this is 1 gb ram and you have given 6 gb rams over here people think that i can save some cost because i can give this 2 gb ram i can give this 3 gb less than that and let's say i i did not use any kind of rds service i'm talking about ec uh, ec2 instance and i'm talking about the AWS thing because RDS is over there. There are other service uh, services on the other uh, public provide public cloud providers. I'm not going to use. They're saying I'm not going to use RDS. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just install. I'm going to install a uh, let's say a local DB. Okay, so now my dev environment is talking to a local DB. Now this is some MS SQL. My stage is also some local DB. And similar thing that happens with QA but what I'm doing is I'm using RDS just because I want a uh, low latency so that's why I'm using RDS services and this is this comes from the AWS now this can work one or two times might not work in the production so whatever results that you are getting in dev stage in QA you are not getting in production environment so this is the third thing that you need to uh, worry about and you can answer in, in the interview that this could be one reason that all the environments are of not same configuration okay so this is the problem that we have talked about now again we'll talk about the solution so what is the solution for this so uh, make sure that everything is correct and similar and uh, sometimes what happens is uh, uh, let's say uh, your application is legacy and it was founded in 2010 and at that time your company was not on uh, AWS it was on on-prem okay and then in 2015 uh, out of four environments uh, two went on cloud on AWS and two were still on on-prem okay so two AWS and two uh, here let me write four and two were on on-prem okay and in 2022 three were on uh, three were on AWS and one was on on-prem okay so the migration did not happen properly and when you had four systems on the on-prem uh, people thought that okay let's let's not do it because we do not know much about the cloud and in here you have two eight on AWS, two on open source three over here and one over here so this is the solution that uh, in whenever you grow with the technology make sure that 
all the environments are proper and tested before so whenever you move to some kind of uh, public cloud or or if I'm not, I'm not saying that on-prem systems are not working properly. I'm saying that whenever you move to an AWS cloud, make sure that everything you do is tested thoroughly over there. Okay. So this could be the solution that all the environments that you do and test are should be of same configuration and should be on the same environment. So uh, this can be the other solution. So I hope you have understood it. Okay. Let's talk about the fourth thing that you can talk about in the interview. Okay, so let me select the color over here. I'll select, I'll select purple this time. Okay, so this is the fourth one. So the fourth one is they are not built in similar way, not built in similar way, similarly, or you can write similarly. Okay, now you are saying that how, how, how this can happen. Again, I'm going to quote an example of the third point. In 2010, you created an on-prem system. Okay, in 2015, you created AWS EC2 instance, but you did it manually. Okay, let me write this on-prem. And in 2021, you created a VM using IAAC. Now you can use anything, there's a plethora of technologies available. You can use Terraform, you can use, uh, what, 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 what else, Bicep, uh, you can use ARM. Uh, you can use cloud formation. You can use, uh, I think we are done. Pulumi. Pulumi is very getting very famous these days, or Vagrant or something. Okay, anything. So you have uh, created your environments using this. Now what happens whenever you create an environment using these things? These things, if you are not uh, experienced enough, you miss a lot of things. And while creating, they forgot uh, some minor details which was critical for deployment. Something which was done manually. So that. That is something that you need to take care about. Now the solution, how do you avoid this? So whenever you create a new environment, test everything and do not discard the old environment. Okay, let me explain. So consider this is an old environment and this is a new environment. Okay, this is an on-prem. Okay, and this is on your uh, public cloud. Okay, now I'm assuming that your process was CI/CD. So your CI/CD was happening and not the manual deployment. When this is CI/CD is happening on the on-prem, everything was perfectly all right. But when you moved over here, there were few details that you need to worry about, all right? And if you have created this using some kind of IASC, make sure that everything was, everything was considered, all right? And once this is done, everything in the CI/CD has to be tested properly. And that's where the testers all the developers who write unit test cases come into come come very handy okay so this is something that you need to take care about that whenever you create a new system test thoroughly okay so i hope you have understood it uh, don't mind the bad handwriting okay uh, let me just reiterate i'll just reduce it to a bit so that you can see so the first uh, the problem statement was bug in production why didn't we catch it before how to avoid in future condition is can't check logs Solution is four solutions that I'm talking about. First is your application was down, server was down. What what could be the reason? And uh, the reason could be anything that uh, the updates were happening, monthly updates were happening, and because of that, it never came up. Now there is one more solution to this. Okay, so I forgot to tell, and there is one more solution to this. You can do, you can add or install the applications. Add or install the applications that check whether my VM is up or not. I think there is there are multiple and check MK is one of them. So uh, I remember in my uh, previous company, what we did is we uh, created some, a few scripts which made a call to the EC2 uh, AWS servers and uh, then they used to give us a result and then we created a web page out of it and then you can just go to the web page and check whether everything is all right or not. And if the VM is up, it was green. If the VM is down, it was red. So that's what we did. So this is one more solution you can add. And this is quite messy over here. So take up, take out a pen and paper and write everything because this is going to be very, very handy when you go for an interview. Okay. Second thing I was explaining that you deploy uh, production, uh, a different branch in the production. So production uh, by mistake, you have gone through dev queue or stage but it was needed production. So that's why there is a bug and it is not working properly. Okay. So 
and uh, the third one which we talked about is that the servers of, of the environments are not of the same configuration yes in order to save some cost the lower environments now lower environments is like dev stage or qa and higher environments is product production so in order to save some cost the lower and the higher environments are not of similar configuration so something that might run on lower environments did not work in higher environments because of something okay and we talked about how do we avoid it make sure everything is correct and similar okay uh, let's go to the fourth one not built similarly not built similarly means that if you have it in 2010 it was on-prem and then in 2015 you created it manually and then 2021 you created it using an IAAC Terraform, Bicep, ARM, CF, is Cloud Formation, Plumi or Vagrant or anything so what you have to do is you have to whenever you create a new environment you have to test it thoroughly this is the solution that your CI CD once was pointing towards this and now is pointing towards this and should be tested thoroughly all the test cases unit test cases and everything is running fine all right so uh, i hope you folks have understood it um i try my best to uh, create these videos and take out a pen and paper and write them and then at the end of this you should be happy to understand this all right so uh, all the best guys if uh, someone asks you uh, this scenario in the interview feel free to use any of these methods all right and do subscribe to the channel do like the video and share this video to people who are into cloud and devops and that would be much helpful for me so thanks guys and if you have uh, any 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 uh, if you have any other thing that you can write and you can show uh, in the interview then please feel free to comment it below and even i will use it all right so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one